Hey everybody, welcome to Sid's Little Corner of the Internet. We've got a third party transforming figure review coming your way. This time around we're going to be taking a look at the Fans Toys FT-54 Warthog. This is their take on a masterpiece scaled G1 Power Glide. So before we jump into this, uh, for those of you who've seen the unboxing video that I put out just a bit ago, uh, I'm going to go rapid fire through a lot of the stuff that I would normally do here, including the box, accessories, so on and so forth, and really get to the meat of the review. So let's jump right into it. So you've got your box, there's Warthog. Warthog FT-54, Warthog stuff on the back, over here Warthog, up here Warthog, down here Warthog, and a QR code if you want to scan it. Alright, so that is it for the packaging. Let's get the box out of the way and let's take a look at everything that came with a Warthog. Behold, laid out here before you is everything that came inside that box. And we'll start over here. You do get your sheet of instructions, or sheet or your booklet of instructions. And over here, you get a little bio card. And right there, we'll take a look. You've got some nice artwork right there. Or not artwork, it's CGI. And by, back here, you have a couple of product shots. You've got all of his tech specs down there. And then you've got a smaller version of the bio that you can find on the box. Card is a nice plastic. I do like what they're doing there. And then you're left with everything that you see right here. So these two items on the outside, these are mounts for... Uh, you can use in the alt mode or in the robot mode for a flight stand. So this is the one for the alt mode. Not a lot to talk about here. Uh, just clear plastic. You mount it. Looks like he's flying. And then this one here. You uh, mount it and uh, you can put him in various poses with that compatible Fans Toys flight stand. All right. So you're left with two accessories right here. And we will start right here. So this is his goofy little mask from the G1 cartoon. Uh, it just plugs in. Basically, you flip his head around 180, or his face around 180 degrees. Plug that in, and you're good to go. Looks pretty good. Got little teeth there. And then here you have his weapon. Not a lot to talk about here. Just a uh, molded plastic. I do like the satin finish that they have on there. So it's a it's a similar satin finish to what they have on the arms and the face. Uh, looks pretty good, but relatively basic. Good news is you do have a uh, Blast Effect compatibility here. I don't know if it was by design or not, but you can certainly plug a Blast Effect in there and go pew pew if you want to. So that's up to you. All right, so that's it for the accessories. Let's go ahead and bring Warthog in and take a closer look at him. Here he is, the bot of the hour. This is Warthog or Power Glide. So let's go ahead and bring him in and take a look at his details. Starting with that head, as one would expect, looks really good. You have those beautiful blue eyes in there coming down to the chest it's kind of a mix here I mean he's basically G1 but he's got more panel lines than I would have expected to see from a G1 figure but yeah that chest looks pretty good and coming on down you know what before we uh, get too far here let's go ahead and talk about what's behind the chest so that way we can see the close-up so you got to do a little bit of work to get there so bear with me I find it easier if we just open that up right there and then you can get your fingernail under there and you can open that up and you can see that Power Glide does indeed have a heart. So very cool. I do like that. It looks good. And of course you can close this back up and leave that open. That way you, he's not looking all awkward. But yeah, then you just close that back up when you're done. And coming down here, so uh, you've got this uh, blue painted area right here, which is reminiscent of the sticker on the G1 figure. So very cool they did that. Coming on down to the legs. Not a lot to talk about here. Uh, the, the legs are very uh, panel-y. Uh, they come, come apart kind of easily uh, just simply because of the way they have uh, all this stuff wrapped around the outer nacelle of those turbines. And you've got those feet. Look pretty good. Again, nothing incredibly exciting here. It's just an overall good looking bot. Coming over here to the side. Uh, I like what they did with the feet. I would have liked the feet to have been a little tighter. They're just really loose as far as the joints there. Um, it's kind of a letdown. But the overall looks looks really good. Uh, let's take a look at him from the side. So you can see no real backpack. He compacts up nicely. Overall, nice uh, profile view there. And coming up the side, take a look. Of course, these are wings, so they're going to be solid. Not a lot to talk about there. 
Uh, looking at the arms, just the right amount of detail as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this is tune accurate as far as these three different faces right here. So really cool, very well done. Uh, and then you do have little power glide hands. These are tiny hands for a masterpiece scaled figure. They're even tinier than uh, Aussie. Aussie is a smaller figure. It's their take on Outback or the equivalent of Hunk, uh, which is brawn. Uh, but these hands are smaller than a smaller bot. So I found that kind of interesting. And taking a look at him from the back. There he is. Everything compacts up. Looks pretty good in my opinion. I have no major concerns here as far as that goes. And then you've got... If you want to get the close-up, you've got all this good stuff going on back here. And then uh, QC passed. It's good news. And you can see <laughs> all the panel folding that goes on for the bottoms of his feet. That was that was really fun. All right, so that is it for the details. So let's go ahead and we'll just jump right into the articulation. And of course, as you may expect, we will be starting with the head. So let's bring him in and take a look at that. So. This is as up as it gets. This is as down as it gets. Nothing really side to side, but you can go all the way around if you choose to do so. And then uh, I guess if you want to count the face, you, you can spin the face 180 degrees to put the mask on, but we'll talk about that in the accessories portion. Uh, as far as the shoulders go, you can bring the arms up that high and go a full 360 around. At the elbows, you can get a nice deep elbow bend there. You do have a bicep rotation sitting right up here just under the shoulder. And then coming on down to those hands, the fingers all come out together. They open and close together. And then you do have a wrist rotation if you want to utilize that. Coming on down to the waist, uh, he's got waist rotation and he has the ab crunch. Uh, you're kind of limited just because of hitting everything, but let's go ahead and go through it. So you can get him basically all the way around if you want to. You're just going to run into these wings a little bit. And then as far as the ab crunch goes, you do get that much of an ab crunch. So he can look down if you want him to. And it's it's a cool mechanism what they're using back here to uh, utilize that ab crunch. So uh, he's still filled in. Doesn't look too bad right there. Uh, the only thing that I really don't like is, especially when you grab that ab crunch, is he does come apart really easily right there in that center area as far as that transformation goes. Uh, so he doesn't, I mean, he locks in, but it doesn't feel as secure as it could. It doesn't feel as secure as I've felt in other fans toys figures in the past. All right. So coming on down to the hips. So similar situation here. You're just going to run into a lot of things. So I'm going to proactively move those hip skirts out. Do that on this leg right here as well. And then what I'm going to do is split him because I want to talk about You've got these little pieces right here that hinder how far up you can go with these legs. If you don't have the those pieces in your way, or if you can flare them out a little bit, you're going to get more room. But as far as the hips go, you do get that much of a range of motion, uh, kicking outward. And then if I compact him back up just to get it all said and done, keep those hip skirts right there. So once you have this down, you're limited. See how he wants to pry apart when you kick those legs out. So just something to be aware of. Uh, it doesn't completely hinder you, but it, they do get in your way more than a little bit. All right, so forward kick, and you can see it's got that loose foot. Forward kick, that far. Back kick, wants to fall apart. Back kick goes that far. So more than enough room. It's not a great amount, but you do get more than enough. And then you can go all the way around. Just be really, really careful about rubbing into things right there. And then coming on down to the knees, you have two points of rotation in the knees that you can utilize. Technically speaking, you're really only supposed to use this upper point of rotation right there. Uh, but you have a second point of rotation right down there that you can use if you need to for posing. And you notice how I pulled that out of his leg assembly there. So go ahead and clamp that back in. All right, and then as far as knee bends go, you get that much of a knee bend. And then coming on down to those feet, you can take those feet down that far. And then as you've noticed with that loose joint, you can do that if you want to. Nice thing is because of this, now you can bring that foot up like that. So if you wanted to, I don't know, do something like that, you have the ability to keep his foot sitting level if you want to do some type of a pose that way. 
All right, and then ankle tilt, uh, you get a little bit, but it's all happening right here in this area. So you can get a little bit that way and a little bit this way. So it's not a great amount, but it is a few degrees and it's better than nothing. All right, so that is it for the articulation. And now that I've got him all cattywampus, he can just sit there and look like that. So let's go ahead and talk about those accessories real quick. I'm not gonna worry about the mounts uh, simply because I don't have a fan's toys flight stand that I can use. So I'm just going to pretend that those don't exist. Uh, they're pretty self-explanatory anyway, and uh, not worth showing off if you don't have the fan's toys flight stand. So uh, let's just focus on the gun here and we're gonna open his hand up. So you've got a little tiny notch right up there and you'll notice you've got that little tiny tab right there. I think you know where this is going. So you plug that in, sits nice and tight. It's not gonna go anywhere. And then you can wrap those fingers around and you're good to go. And then you can just have yourself a grand old time, throw a blast effect on there if you want to. And uh, look, he's, he's like, I'm looking at you, but I'm shooting over there. Hey, all right, <laughs> so enough of that. Now let's get to the difficult part. So I do find this difficult, uh, turning this face 180 degrees is not the easiest thing to do, part, partially because the uh, joint is nice and tight, so I'm not complaining about that, but secondly, because it's just a, a small space, so depending on the size of your fingers and the size of your fingernails, maybe you'll have an easier time than I will, but basically what you need to do is get your thumb in there, and what I do is I get right on that notch right there of his faceplate, and I just start pulling it. And then when I get to a certain point, if I can't go any further, I'll use a tool. But in this circumstance, I got lucky. Now it looks like he's just a faceless screaming something. <laughs> but uh, you'll notice that you've got a couple of notches or a couple of uh, slots right there. They're going to line up to the tabs. And then you're just going to take that mask, line it up, and plug it in. And hey, look at that. It's Power Glide with his mask on. Ta-da! I know you guys are pretty impressed. All right, so that is it for the accessories. Um, I don't know why he would have his mask on while he's firing, but eh, there you go. So yeah, that uh, that pretty much covers it. Uh, I think, man, as far as the bot mode looks, he's pretty accurate to the G1 bot. I think he's got a pretty good look to him. I think overall articulation is good. He's limited in the head. He's limited in those ankles. But I think you've got it everywhere else. Uh, if you can navigate around the hip skirts and a little bit of your limitations here, you can still put them in some pretty dynamic poses and have a good time with the guy. So uh, I think overall articulation has done pretty well. Just a few things that would have been a little bit better. Always nice to have waist rotation and the ab crunch, though. Uh, accessories, they're nice. Eh, they don't excite me too much, but they're pretty good. All right, so with all that said, Let's go ahead and get to the next task at hand, which is transforming this guy into his alt mode. It, after you do it a few times, it's not bad, but man, this guy is fiddly. So uh, let's go ahead and just jump into it. Before we get into the transformation for Warthog, just a few quick notes. Uh, number one, it's not a difficult transformation, but you have to be really careful on how you follow uh, the, the, the transformation process in order to get him correct. He has very tight tolerances, he can be very fiddly, and it can be a real pain in the butt. Uh, so that being said, um, normally I don't edit my transformations. I try to keep them as organic and flowing as possible, but in this circumstance I may edit a few times simply for saving some time and to keep you from hearing me cuss because uh, he's so exact, it can get a little frustrating. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into it and uh, you know we'll cross that bridge if and when we have to. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna transform the arms into those bombs or, or fuel cells, whatever they are that are underneath the wing, right? So the first thing you're gonna wanna do if you bring that arm forward, uh, then you're going to, you've got this little flap right here, you're just going to grab that little flap, bring that down and that's going to let you break that arm, you're going to turn it just like that. And when you do that, now you're going to take this little flap right here and you're gonna open that up. Now this assembly right here is on a 
double hinge on the inner part of that arm. So if you see what I'm doing here, you're just going to bring that forward on that double hinge and then you're going to collapse that fist in and hide it away right there and then you're going to close that up. All right, once you're here, now you're going to fold this arm in on itself. So you're going to take this piece right here and you're going to rotate that around and then keep going and get that as rotated as you possibly can and then push that forward a little bit. That's going to give you the clearance that you need for that. Go ahead and get this out of the way. You could have done that first, but you're going to need to get it out of the way eventually. So now that you're here, make sure you're clear everywhere. And then you're going to fold this in. And then you'll notice you have, I should have shown you this earlier, you get this little tab right there. You have a slot right there. So you're actually going to take once you get that folded in, you're going to get those lined up and then give those a push, squeeze all that in, and then you've got that arm transformed. Chances are this is not going to stay where it is as we handle this guy, but that ideally is where you, <laughs> you want that to be. All right, so let's go ahead and do the same thing with this arm over here. So we're going to open that arm up right there, bring this little piece down, and we're going to extend that out. This slide is a little stickier than the other one on my copy, so... This one may not be as fun or as easy, or I might get lucky. Hey, look at that, I got lucky. All right, so then you're going to collapse the fist in, close that up, make sure that's out of your way, rotate this around, push that up, move that wing out of your way, and then bring this up, swing that around, find that slot, squeeze all that together. And then you've got two of those done, so you should have something that looks like that. All right. So the next thing that we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to take these wings and we're going to want to bring everything apart. So pretty easy to do. You're just going to grab this wing, give it a pull here. It's going to separate from that area right there. That was my dog flapping her ears in the background. Uh, then do the same thing with this wing over here and give that a pull. If it separates right here, it's no big deal. Ultimately, that's what we're going to want. So it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to separate that wing. Whoa, where are you going? Getting ahead of me. Well, now he's all flopped apart. But anyway, <laughs> so if that happens, it's okay that it happens. So you were right here. You're just going to bring that down. And the one thing that I didn't want you to see, well, not that I didn't want you to see it, but it wasn't part of our steps yet, was you have this little tab right here. So once you have those wings separated like that, now you can really explode this guy and you can lift these tabs up right here. And when you, when you lift this little tab up right there, that is going to explode this entire assembly. Well, you got to pull it out from under his head. There we go. So once you have it like that, you lift this tab, and then this entire wing explodes on you. So we'll do the same thing over here. That's already separated. Lift that up. That's going to explode. Okay, so now we're going to form the wings. All right, so in order to form the wings, you're going to bring this up, and then bring this down right here. And you'll see you've got a slide area right here, so take that, slide that wing down, so it's like that. Now this provides a clearance area right here for this slot on your landing gear. So now what you're going to do is take this landing gear, bring that flap down, bring that landing gear up like that, bring it out, and then bring it forward and push until it snaps. All right. Now that you've got that, now expand that wing completely out on that double hinge. And you see you've got slot, slot, tab, tab, and then you can align that. And there you go, you've got a wing. All right, so we'll do the same thing over here. And bring that down. It's a floppy, floppy wing, especially when I've got a camera right here in front of me. It's not the easiest thing in the world to navigate. So bring this slider down. Bring this tab or bring this little flap down. Right there. Lift this up, swing it out. She's flapping her ears again. She just woke up from a nap, so she wants to be a part of the video, I suppose. And then close that in till it snaps. And then collapse 
these together. Try to get the little flap under your big flap. There you go. Because you'll notice that these little flaps right here, they've got little uh, tabs on them as well. All right. So the uh, first edit of the transformation is going to be me letting my dog outside. All right, let's go ahead and get back to the task at hand, which is transforming Warthog. And we were at the spot where we had created the wings. So let's take care of the rest now. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to create that front part of the jet. In order to do that, the first thing we're going to need to do is get rid of that face. So just like what you've done before for the accessories uh, for his mask, you're just going to spin that face around. Not the easiest thing in the world to do. Uh, you get it spun around and then you're all good. You should have something that looks like that. Now we're going to take these sections right here. Just give those a pull. That's as wide as they get. They don't need to get any wider. That gives us all the access that we need now so we can get to that fuselage. So you can see it tucked away in there. So what we're going to do is just grab a hold of his head and start wiggling. And then that's going to pull that fuselage out. When we pull that fuselage out, that landing gear is probably going to come with it and that's totally fine. If anything, that probably helps a little bit. So now you're going to want to take this panel right here, open this panel up. So get your finger in, fingernail in there, open that panel up, and then you're going to have your um, the the A10 brrp gun right there, that Gatling gun, and then you're going to bring that out. You're going to expand all of that so it's sitting like that, and then you can just bring that forward and. Close all that up. You're probably going to need to do this again uh, after you do all your manhandling, but you can do it now. Just kind of give you an idea of what you're going to be looking at. Okay, so now we're going to take this cockpit section right here. We're going to lift that up a little bit. We're going to rotate that 180 degrees. That's going to allow us to get to this cockpit section. So just tuck a finger under there, flip this up, and bring that down. And now you can see you've got this area right here. That's going to line up pretty well with that. So take your little flaps, just kind of get them right there. And then you can start lining this up. And you can see you've got these little flaps right here. If you squeeze them on either side, do that. And then if you look right here, you've got a tab and a slot system right there. So if you squeeze those and then close these tabs up right there, give everything a nice solid squeeze. And then you've got the front end of your jet. Now you can just take this, it's sitting on a double hinge, bring that back, and then you're good to go. All right, push everything together. All right, so for all intents and purposes, you have the front of the jet finished. Now we're going to get into the what I consider to be the most frustrating part of the, the transformation, which is turning these legs into the rear of the jet. So I'm going to do a quick camera adjustment because we're going to be laying this guy down. And before we get too deep into this, I want to point a couple of things out real quick. So uh, if I lift, well, I guess what, what we could do is go ahead and we're going to expand this guy out. So give this a pull and then the, you're going to expand that center section out right there. That's going to give you the clearance that you need to bring these wings down. But before we do that, I want to lift these up and I want to show you a couple things. It's easier to show them to you now than it is later. So you're going to bring these wings down when you get to, to this point. So you have these little, uh, what were the side skirts, actually going to become part of the fuselage sitting on a double hinge right there. So if you bring those down right there, you notice you've got this port right there. And then you've got, of course, this tab or this peg right there. And you're guessing it, right? It's going to go right there. Uh, and then you have this tab right there that's going to line up with that slot. That's what's going to lock all your, your, your wings into place and uh, basically solidify the entire jet. I'm just going to get this landing gear out of the way. All right. So, but before we do that, we're going to do the bottom. I just wanted to point that, that section out before we get any further. So let's go ahead and flip him around and just take those wings. These wings are just going to be really loose right now. They're just going to keep getting in your way. So flip these wings forward. I'm going to move my camera even further down so the way I can give you as good of a view as possible of what's going on here. So you're going to take these legs and you're going to rotate right up here at that thigh. You're going to rotate those around 
so you can see these screws. You want to be able to see these screws. So do that on both sides. And now you're going to need to disconnect the legs from this joint right from this joint right in here. So it's going to take a little bit of effort, so give that a pop. And then you're going to bring these pieces down right there. All right, so do the same thing over here. All right, so you should have something that looks about like that. Again, keep those out of your way for now. All right, so now it, take these legs and just bring them out a little bit so they're a little bit spread from each other. You are going to want to make sure that you take these side skirts and close those up. That's going to add some rigidity here so he doesn't flop around too much on you. That way the only floppiness is in those wings. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take at this joint right here and we're going to rotate 90 degrees like that and then I'm going to pull this leg I'm going to expand this leg out right here so give this a pull until you see this area right there that's going to expand that out once you've done that now what I'm going to do is a little bit of a I don't know uh, using leverage I suppose what I, what I need is I need this screw to be back here. So I'm going to take my leg, I'm going to bend it like that. I'm going to bring it down like that. So now I have a screw on top and then I have a screw facing me. All right, and then after you've done that, now you're going to rotate this leg. Don't rotate the screw, rotate down here. So you'll see that this leg can rotate independent of that screw. So then you're going to rotate that leg and then you need to take these panels off. So just reach up under there, reach up under there, and disconnect those panels. Pull that foot so it's out of your way. And then you're going to take this piece right here. You're going to get it past that foot. And then right here, it's going to come out. So if you lift this piece up just like this, and then pull it, you'll see that that comes out. And now that's a point of rotation. All right, so now what you're going to do is you're going to flip this around, rotate that 180 degrees. All right, now we're going to take, still ensuring that our screws are oriented as they are, we're going to bend 90 degrees right here. When you bend 90 degrees right here, you're going to notice, trying to keep all the floppiness away from you, you're going to notice that's your point of rotation. So when you see the completed turbine, that's when you know that you've got the correct orientation. Okay, so once you have that, now I'm going to show you kind of a sneak preview to so you can make sure that you're kind of on the right track here. Um, you want to, once again, flip this like that, and then you're going to take this little piece right here, and flip that in. And then, just to check yourself, straighten your leg out, and then at the point where the screw is, this screw right here, you're going to rotate this up. So now your engine is oriented in approximately the right location, and this gives you a chance to check. Does your fuselage line up? Does everything look about where it's supposed to be? And in this case, yes it does. So we're in pretty good shape as far as that goes. So we've got one side ready. Like I say, this is a pain. I find it kind of frustrating, but uh, we'll, we'll get there. We'll do this as a team. So take this leg out, just enough to give you some clearance. Bend 90 degrees right there, and then expand this out, and then just twist this leg so you've got that screw you've got a screw up you've got a screw forward all right and then you can lift that up all right now take that foot expand that out take these pieces get that past there lift this up pull that out and then rotate that 180 degrees 
and then you're going to orient it as such. Make sure you've got a screw on top, screw in the back, and then bring that leg back where you were, and then rotate right there at that joint right there. By make sure you've got a complete turbine, and then right here at this black screw, lift that up and make sure that you're looking about where you need to be. And in this case, we are, other than it being a floppy mess, but we'll get it taken care of. All right, so get, get down. There you go. So you can kind of see what we're going for there. Now it's just a matter of getting everything tabbed in properly. So a couple of things to note, uh, mistakes, things that I've learned that hopefully you won't have to go through. Bring this in a little closer. You have tabs right here and then on the other side that are going to correspond to the slots on the inside of these. All right. Additionally, you are going to have, if I flip this in and show you, I'm trying to find you the best view here, you have these posts that are going to correspond to these holes right there. All right, so when you bring that together, the idea is your posts are going to fall in line there, and then your tabs are going to fall in line right there on those uh, those areas. Now, the other thing that you're going to want to do once you have these approximately oriented like this is you need to take your, if you're seeing chrome here, you shouldn't. You should see red on red. So make sure that that is collapsed and looks like that. All right, same thing on this side. So one of these sides is stickier than the other. All right, so as you can see from this hot mess, the only thing that I did was just collapse that turbine in. It's just a little stickier than the other side. There was no sense in you having to sit through me struggling and cussing at it. So once you have all this aligned, it really is a matter of just tabbing all of this stuff in, getting it lined up, and uh, making sure that you have everything secured. So let's go ahead and start doing that. So again, just another edit to try to save a little bit of time here. As you can see, I have the front or the uh, the rear fuselage area tabbed in uh, in those two tabs that I showed you and then collapsed together. And then if you look underneath here, you also need to ensure that you have your posts tabbed in on either side. Make sure that you're sitting flush up under here and that everything is aligned as it should be. Now, the one thing that you don't want to ignore is this little section right back here. So this is the, the, the back section. So you need to make sure, number one, that you have everything collapsed inside. So you're going to see those two kind of uh, semicircles or half moons right there. And then you'll see you have these areas that line up right here. So just make sure that you have those things so they're sitting relatively flush to each other. I've never been able to get them 100% perfect, but if I can get them about right here, then I'm pretty happy. So then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to see this post and peg right there or post and hole. And then I always have this spot right here in the middle, but just because these engines are in the way, it makes it really difficult to get those in and collapse that in so it's sitting nice and flush. So that's usually about the best I can get. And then double check this right here and make sure all that is looking about as good as possible. All right, and now you'll notice you still have some misalignment with those engines. So this is where you could spend a lot of time just lining everything up. Uh, I will tell you that, you know, you can, there is a little bit of play in these engines where you can maneuver these around and try to get those in a slightly better spot, especially if you notice, like I did, that my fuselage looks like sometimes it curves a little bit. Uh, you can solve that problem by moving those engines around and kind of getting everything compacted up a little bit better. All right, so just something to take note when you're transforming your own. So now that we're here, let's go ahead and secure these wings in. And once we secure these wings in, you've just got one less floppy thing and then we can handle the floppy feet. All right, so in order to 
do those wings we're going to go back and talk about what just touch real briefly what we talked about earlier uh, you have these slots right there you have this little area right there and you're going to bring that wing in and collapse all that in just like that and then you're going to close this tab up make sure you're aligned oops which i wasn't and then close that up and now you've got a nice solid wing all right so I'll do the same thing over here bring that in and lift that flap up so it's out of my way bring that in close that up and then close that flap down on that tab and then you have two solid wings so there you go all right now we're going to do the feet and that's going to make the rear of the plane so those rear fins thankfully this is pretty easy uh, it's not that big of a deal so all you need to do here is these are the bottoms of the feet so you're just going to take that flap right there you're going to lift that flap up and then you're going to lift this flap up once you do that now you're going to bring this back like that and then this little flap that you just lifted up you're going to bring that forward and then these come together so flip this out and then bring these together and then you have that rear or at least the left side rear so bring this this uh, piece up right there all right and then when you do that now you're going to you've got a point of rotation here you get this little tab right here so you're going to rotate that around and this, you're just ballparking this right now so you're going to ballpark that tab going right in there and then once you do that now you can rotate the wing itself so you get that approximate location this side has the landing gear so the landing gear is going to flip out on you and then you're just going to bring that landing gear out just like that all right so do the same thing over here you're going to grab that fin grab this fin and then you're going to open this up right there try to give you a good view open this up bring that fin out and then close all that together take this little guy right here bring that little guy up and then find your tab right there swing that around on that point of rotation and then ballpark line that up and then rotate this and then once you have that approximate location I'm gonna do another quick camera adjustment so that way I'm not running into my mount and then you're gonna rotate that around rotate this around line these two guys up make sure you get your tabs in tab and tab Just fine tune that and then squeeze all that together. Landing gear down. Now we'll take these landing gear right here, just kind of give them a pinch and a pull. Grab that front landing gear. If it collapses on you, there you go. And whew, thankfully. Other than just cleaning it up and straightening everything out, we are finished with Warthog and we have him in his alt mode. Well, I gotta say, it's probably not the most fun transformation I've ever done. It's certainly not the worst. But once you get him here, man, he's a good looking A10 Thunderbolt for sure. Um, you know, I've got some issues with the color scheme. Uh, the all red is fine, but it's uh, the, the differences between the painted die cast and the molded plastic just those different shades of red it kind of cobbles him together a little bit it's not the worst thing i've ever seen i, I think overall he comes together looking pretty darn good uh, but i wanted to throw him on the turntable here so you could get a nice unobstructed view of him 360 degrees uh, before we bring him in for his close-up and uh, start going through all of that but yeah um really cool alt mode i do very much like it uh but let's go ahead and get that turntable out of the way 
and then we'll bring him in for his close-up. Let's go ahead and start as we always do with the front of the vehicle here and bringing him on in and you can see he does have that gun right under his nose. Got a little bit of a gap there. Just got to close that up. There we go. He's got that gun right under his nose. Uh, it's molded in red plastic. A little bit of splash of paint there. Wouldn't have been something I objected to, but uh, yeah, still uh, that got that classic A10 Gatling gun kind of style. Uh, you do have the clear cockpit in the front area and then just that red plastic in the back. Um, decent amount of detail here, a lot of panel lines. Um, if you look close, some of it's riveting. So yeah, it looks pretty cool. And then uh, the underside, man, he cleans up. I'll give him that. I mean, it's great to see a transformer that doesn't have a bunch of kibble hanging off the bottom. Uh, so yeah, coming over here, taking a look at those wings. Not a lot to talk about here, but they come together looking pretty good. And then, uh, you know, he does have those classic uh, power glide folded up arm hands. Oh no, I just knocked that wing out of... Oh well. <laughs> he, he's pretty solid, but it doesn't take a lot to get him kind of out of whack. But it's uh, pretty easy to put him back in whack, I guess. But yeah, so he does have those power glide arm hands. But, but these look pretty good uh, under the wing there. They don't look awful. So, yeah, I mean, that is definitely classic Power Glide. And looking at the turbines, you do get a splash of silver inside for those blades. And coming around to the side, detail on those fins in the back. Kind of a nice back view there. And then the left side is the same as the right side. But we'll take a look anyway. There is that overall profile view in this mode and I think he turned out looking great I mean gosh he's so so slim and proportional and looks like an airplane all the way around eh, I could get used to this kind of stuff this might spoil me uh, yeah and then coming around there's the front of that cockpit again uh, the landing gear are okay there's nothing special about them these are just plastic wheels and then it looks like you've got some rivets uh, for those center hubs so nothing amazing there uh, underside he does clean up pretty darn good you know, unless you really know what you're looking for, I think he does a convincing job there of uh, hiding everything. So yeah, very cool. Give you another view there. I think that all comes together quite nicely. You know, you do have a little bit of uh, all the way through action uh, if you got that landing gear down, so you can see all the way through him. But that's not awful. All right. So as far as things that you can do with him in this mode, there's not a lot. Uh, there's no so there's no weapon storage in the alt mode, so this is his pistol. You can't really do anything with that. Uh, you, you could, I guess if you wanted to, you could put his mask on. You would just disconnect this right here and slap his mask on, and then he could be flying around with a, with a mask on underneath if you wanted to do that. But really about the only thing that you can do in this mode is messing around with this cockpit a little bit. So you can uh, lift this up, so kind of cool, bring that forward. And then if you wanted to, you can lift this back section up right there. And, you know, there's not, it's not like there's any detail in there or anything, but, you know, you could pretend and who doesn't like to do that? So close that back up and then bring that forward, close that up, and then you're good to go. But yeah, uh, he's really cool. Uh, what a great alt mode. Turned out looking really nice. So uh, really no complaints there other than just... The the color discrepancies between the paint and the molded plastic, but yeah, man, what a, what a cool looking plane. I love A10s anyway, so this is right up my alley. All right, so now that we've got all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the comparisons and see how he looks compared to some other jets that are out there. For our first alt mode comparison, here we see Warthog, aka Power Glide. Next to a fellow Fans Toys figure, this is the Fans Toys Phantasm, which is their take on a Masterpiece Scale Mirage. For our next comparison, here we see Warthog next to Nitro Zeus from that Transformers The Last Night movie, and I figured I would bring Nitro Zeus in because, hey, why not? And our last few comparisons here are going to be Warthog against various other Power Glides. So this is uh, the Legion class uh, Power Glide uh, from, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, something like that. 
Moving on to our next comparison, this is the New Age Hughes. This is New Age's take on a Legend Scaled Power Glide, and he's a cool little figure all on his own as well. Next up, this is the OG. This is my G1 Power Glide, and you can see just how much of an homage Fans Toys did to this G1 figure. So, a lot of styling cues there, took as much information in as they could, and in my opinion, I think they did a nice mix between the G1 toy and the G1 cartoon as well. Speaking of the G1 cartoon, this is our last comparison, so I figured I would uh, go ahead and put up the cartoon version of Power Glide in his alt mode so you can see how Warthog over here looks compared to that. That's going to do it for the alt mode comparison, so let's go ahead and get Warthog transformed back into his bot mode. Thankfully, that transformation is not as frustrating or fiddly as getting him into his alt mode, so let's go for it. All right, let's go ahead and get Warthog transformed back into his bot mode. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to fold in all the landing gear that I can just to get those out of my way. So I'm just going to fold, fold, and fold just to get those out of my way. That way I'm going to be able to lay nice and flat. All right, so now I'm going to come back here. I thought I had my camera adjusted correctly. Maybe there we go, a little bit lower. I'm going to come back here and then I'm going to give these a split. All right, once I split those, now I'm going to be able to make the feet. So I'm going to start over here talking about those landing gear. You can only take this landing gear so far. You're not going to be able to take it all the way uh, at first. So you're going to be able to take it about that far. All right, so don't try to force it any further than that. Uh, but then you're going to split right here. And then once you split right there, this landing gear and this flap are connected. So you're just going to start bringing this forward. That's going to tuck that landing gear away. And then you're going to take this little flap right here, fold that little flap down, and then you're going to be able to take this piece right here, bring that forward just like that, and then you're going to fold this over just like that. All right, now you're going to take this flap right here. You've got this little tab. You've got this little slot. Go line that up. Give that a push, and then you've got this port and your and this little peg right there. Take that piece, fold that in, and you have one foot. For all intents and purposes, you have one foot completed. Uh, just give that a little bit of a rotate right there, and then you can tuck that away. Well, you, you can tuck it away if you want to, but I'm not going to right now. All right, so then we're going to come over here to this one, and we're going to split that right there. We're going to bring this flap down just a little bit. And then we're going to bring this flap down. We're going to rotate this around. We're going to bring that foot down, or the top of that foot, the metal tarsal area. We're going to close this. And we're going to close this. And then, look at that, two feet. All right. All right, next thing we're going to do, just to make life easier for us, is we're going to disconnect those wings. So we're going to flip him upside down. We're going to lift these tabs right here. That's going to allow these wings to come out and then swing forward. Now I've got those wings out of my way. It's going to make life a lot easier for me to take this and split this. Yes, you're going to have floppy wings, but it sure makes it a lot easier to tear all this apart. So if I just grab them by the engines here and start giving this a pull, wiggle that a little bit. Pull this right here, and then you're just simply going to unfold him like that. Now, what we're going to do, this is why it's so much easier getting him into his bot mode than it is uh, getting him here, is because you don't have to be as precise and as careful. You're really just pulling stuff apart here at this point. So I'm going to bring this leg out just a little bit, and then I'm just going to straighten this leg out. So all these bends that I have, I'm just straightening those out right now. And that's going to make it super easy. Thank goodness. All right. <laughs> so once you have that, now you're going to take the, this piece right here. So it was sitting like that. You are going to lift that up. You're going to rotate it 180 degrees as such. And then you're going to lift this little piece out right here because that's going to wrap around the leg. Now, a little bit of preparation that you can do here before you do that, because what you're going to do is you're going to fold this down 
and then you're going to wrap this piece around. So a little bit of preparation that you can do before you do all of that is you find this little notch right here with those three lines on it. Hopefully you can see it because that little notch right there is going to give you the clearance that you need for this area. So I'm going to go back to where I was just because I went over some of those steps kind of fast. So you're going to have it like that and then you're at this point of rotation you're going to rotate that inward and then you're going to split it right here and rotate this so you're sitting like that on the leg. All right, now you have spots on the legs. You've got this notch right there. That's going to go to that tab. And then if you look over here, you have, I guess it's easier if I undo that. You're going to have this tab right there, and then you're going to have that notch right there. So that's what you're going to be aligning everything to. So fold that back down. Hold this around 180 degrees, have that notch lined up right there, and then what you're going to do is you're going to push down on this area right here, and that's going to collapse that in, and then wiggle that around just a little bit to make sure that you've got the clearance that you need for that hinge right in there, and then you're going to give everything a squeeze. It's going to line up pretty well for you. Give everything a squeeze, and then you can bring that foot in. Now. Foot's on a point of rotation right here, so rotate that around. And then you have that lower leg area completed. So we're going to do the same thing over here. I'm just going to move that out of my way. We're going to come over here, extend that foot out so it's not in my way. Pull this little piece out. Rotate this 180 degrees. Extend all of this and straighten it out. And then... You're going to fold that in, collapse that, well don't, don't collapse it yet, sorry, my bad. Fold that in, and then take this 180 degrees, look for your notch, find that notch right up under there, and then collapse that, make sure that everything's lined up properly, that'll, that'll let that collapse all the way, give that a squeeze, and make sure everything is all lined up in there and then you can collapse your foot twist that foot a little bit if you have to and there you have two legs two lower legs complete and now we can work on the upper part of the legs so what you're going to need to do yes these are floppy yes these are going to get in your way but what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take this section right here and you're going to need to bring that up i'm going to do it laying down but you're going to need to bring it up until they snap into place. So it does take a pretty significant amount of force to get them in there. It's not a worrisome amount of force, but it is significant. There we go. So you want those to be locked into place like that. Then you're going to bring your legs down. You're going to rotate these so the screws are to the inside. Bring that leg down the rest of the way. Same thing over here, rotate those so the screws are to the inside, and now we're going to turn him around because this is going to be the front of the robot. So now we're going to see a little bit of what we need to do here. All right, so you'll see you have these little black screws right there. You want those facing to the inside, so I'm going to bring my leg up like that. That's going to allow me to rotate my leg so my screws are on the inside. Now, he's a little pigeon-toed because of that. So what you need to do is you need to rotate this lower leg right here, not at the screw, but right down here. So right there. And then you're going to find the sweet spot that's going to allow you to collapse all of this in. And then once you collapse all of that in, that's your finished leg. All right, so let's do the same thing over here. So I'm going to, that one was already pre-collapsed. I'm going to bring that out, put that screw to the inside, bring this down. And I'm going to rotate my leg, find my sweet spot, collapse that in, and then I have two legs done, and that's going to let me stand him up so I can focus on the upper body. All right, so what we're going to do now is get these wings out of the way, do a camera adjustment. 
because we're going to focus on all this good stuff up here. All right, so there we go, that should be enough. All right, so what we're gonna wanna do now is just go ahead, if you want to do it now, go ahead and peel this part off and just bring that down. When you bring that down, this turret, bring that turret forward and it's gonna go through a couple of hard notches. Uh, hard, not hard stops, but you're gonna feel a couple of really hard clicks right there, and that's where you're gonna want that to be. All right, now take this right here on either side, and then give that a split. That's going to loosen all of this fuselage up right here. So now what we're gonna be able to do, we've got this pulled out, we're going to come back here, we're going to lift this up and get that tucked right up there out of our way. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to collapse this first. So we're going to take this piece in, get his head out of the way, push that end where it clicks, and then close that up right there and flip this piece around and into the body. Oh, sorry, I did that in the wrong order. We're gonna flip this piece in first, then we're gonna flip that piece in. So this piece first, then that piece. I did that backwards. All right, and then we're gonna take this cockpit, spin that around 180 degrees, tuck that in right there, and then that's going to allow us to collapse the entirety of this on that double hinge right there. And we're gonna drop that right into this area down in there. So, get everything lined up. Give that a squeeze. And you should be all set right there. Oops. These legs are gonna to wanna to move on you, so just be careful. All right, so once you have him here, uh, you can turn his face around now or later if you want to. It's uh, really up to you when you want to do it. Um, might need a little bit of assistance, depending on how long your finger fingernails are. There we go. There we go. Hey, look at that. It's power glide face. Okay, so now once we have this, now we got to take care of the floppy arms. So I'm going to do one more camera adjustment. Bring that down so we can have the focus in the right area. All right, so you've got these sitting out. You wanna make sure that you keep these sitting about like that. Keep these tabs sitting about like that. So you need to take care of these arms now. We're almost home, getting closer at least. All right, so bring the wing up, bring that down like this, and push this little flap down, and then you're gonna break the wing right here. You're gonna get that wing and disconnect it, because now what you need to do is you need to take this landing gear down. So hold right here. Bring the landing gear down, fold it in, and then fold it down right here, and then flip that little piece up. Now, this is your visual cue. This is what I use to help me. So if you see, you flip this around, that's the back of Power Glide. okay? So we're not there yet, but just to make sure that you've done it correctly. Now, take your wing, you've got this slider right here. Take that wing, slide it up just like that, okay? So once, we, once you have that, now we are going to go ahead and flip this around and you can see kind of where all this is going. So you have this little tab right there. That's going, you're going to use that to hold all this together. So push these two pieces together and collapse that tab and then that's going to keep everything collected right there for you. Now, before I get any further, let me uh, adjust this wing real quick. So this wing's sitting on a double hinge. So you're going to collapse that wing in like that. But before we, I get any further, I'm going to take this little piece right here. I'm going to put that up on a double hinge and I'm going to bring that up. So that was part of the fuselage that becomes a hip skirt. So make sure you bring that up. And then once you have that, now you can see you have these two tabs right here that are going to go to those two notches. And then you can line those up and collapse those in. You should have something that looks like that. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side over here. So we're gonna take our wing. We're going to break that piece away, drop that flap, 
push that down 90 degrees fold that down until it snaps lift this up and then we're going to close that little flap in right there and then we're going to bring this up and we can see that we should have that going on and now this wing is sitting on a double hinge so bring that down like that take your hip skirt lift your hip skirt up and then take your wing take it the rest of the way down and now we're in a situation where we're able to squeeze all this together so you've got these little tabs right on either side of the head all you need to do is squeeze all of that and then you're good to go all right now for the midsection easy to do here just kind of take your thumb push in right there you've got this little peg that's going to fall in right in there so once you have that down give all of this a push and then Squeeze all that together, and then you have his midsection, and now we're down to the arms. So what we need to do for the arms is take these arms, we're going to bring them out just like that, and then we're going to give the arms a little bit of a pull, and then we're going to, I'm going to swing them around, take this little flap right there, open that flap up, and then swing these out just like that. All right, now I'm going to take this piece right here. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to get my hand out. And then this is sitting on a slider. So I'm going to slide that back. Getting out of control on me here, Warthog. And then close my hand. And then close my arm up. And then close that flap. Come back here. Close that double wing. Do the same thing here. So I'm going to break that arm. Bring it around. Open that flap right there. Bring that out. Bring my hand out. It's going to come back on that double slider. Close this up. Close my little flap on the bottom. And close my wings up. And there you have... Warthog, he's bowing to you. There you have Warthog back in his bot mode. We're going to have a little bit of fun with these bot mode comparisons. We're going to have more than a few, more than we typically do in our reviews, just simply because I enjoy this guy and I want to have uh, the opportunity to show off a few other figures, uh, particularly some fans toys figures that I haven't had a chance to review yet and I wanted to get them some screen time. So starting us off here, this is the Fans Toys Parkour. This is their take on a Masterpiece Scaled Cliff Jumper. And you can see both of these guys in the tunes uh, and in the toys were mini bots. But uh, you can see that uh, Warthog does have a pretty good uh, size advantage on parkour over here. Next up is the Fans Toys Aussie. So this is their take on a G1 Outback, which was that twin of Brawn. So again, both of these guys were mini bots. Uh, you can see... However, that Warthog is just a little bit bigger than Aussie in uh, this case. And I think those two guys uh, size up pretty good together. Continuing the fans toys trend here, uh, we're just going to run the gamut here as far as size goes. And this is the fans toys jive. It's their take on a masterpiece jazz. And you can see, man, Power Glide or uh, Warthog here is, is about the same size as jive is, which uh, is a little surprising. But man, these guys look really good together. Next up is the very angry, very violent looking Fans Toys Recorder. This is their take on a Masterpiece Blaster. And uh, yeah, I mean, you talk about some mass shifting going on. Yeah, this guy's got some mass shifting going on. This will be our last Fans Toys uh, figure comparison here. And uh, talking about the mass shifting, this guy's got it going on in spades too. This is the Fans Toys Quietus, their take on Cyclonus. And... Yeah, if you can convert into a spaceship big enough that Megatron can sit in or Galvatron can sit in, yeah, you've got some mass shifting magic. So in my opinion, I think this is one of the cooler comparisons that I'm going to have in this review, uh, just simply from the fact that you've, you've got a normal size masterpiece level figure with a Legends class masterpiece level figure here in the, the form of the New Age Toys uh, Hughes, which is their take on that Legend scaled Power Glide. And you can see, man, this just looks like a father and son outing kind of thing. They they even have matching uh, QC Pass stickers on them. So uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool. But yeah, the uh, this little guy here, 
Uh, it looks really good, and it's really cool to see these two standing together. And in a complete juxtaposition to the last comparison, this is the mainline Legion scale Power Glide. So yeah, this guy's 10 plus years old, but uh, he's got some pretty good engineering to him, but really is no comparison to that new age Hughes. But here he is next to Warthog, just uh, for a sense of size comparison, scale comparison there. And how cool is this? You know, to see where we started, the, the, the humble beginnings to some incredible crazy engineering here. Yeah, he's a pain to transform, but both of his modes look fantastic. And it's just fun to see that difference from where we started to where we are right now in that form of that G1 Power Glide. And for our final bot mode comparison, here we see Warthog, aka Power Glide, next to his cartoon self just to give you an idea of how crazy accurate fans toys got with this figure. I mean, up to and including kind of those faceted edges on the, on the forearms, uh, you know, just the, the of course, that, that midsection, the series of buttons and paint right there, just an outstanding job. Just really cool to see kind of that cartoon brought to life. And that's gonna do it for the bot mode comparisons, but before we get into those final thoughts, I do wanna point something out. I just had a realization. I'm looking at the new age hues and I've come to a conclusion here. He looks like the evil version of Power Glide. You know, like down here, his little mask, it looks like a uh, five o'clock shadow, kind of like Superman in Superman 3 when he fought himself in the junkyard. Uh, it's just uh, Power, Power Glide goes, goes bad and uh, grows a little bit of a five o'clock shadow there on his mask. So uh, just my two cents on that. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into those final thoughts. So there we have the Fans Toys FT-54 Warthog. And barring the fact that it is a finicky transformation to get him from his bot mode into his alt mode, this figure is a blast. He's just a ton of fun. I really like him. So let's go ahead and get into it and quantify him a little bit here. We'll start with the overall looks of the figure, just that, that aesthetic that he brings. Uh, I will tell you right off the bat, man, he's got a good looking bot mode. I mean, this thing is really, really cool, really accurate. A lot of fun, a lot of cool stuff that you can do with him. Uh, you know, if I'm going to pick a little bit, his legs are a little bit cobbled together, the lower legs where they assemble. They're not perfectly clean, uh, you know, so there's a little there's a little bit going on down there as far as uh, being busy, but uh, I can overlook it pretty much uh, <laughs> compared to the rest of the bot and what you can do with this guy. So uh, I absolutely love the little touches. So as he's coming around, just the fact that he's got this heart, I don't know what he's doing here. He's got his chest open, showing his heart, shooting at somebody. I don't know. I was just making a pose. But yeah, those little touches like that, uh, really cool, and just uh, makes him that much more cartoon accurate. Uh, regarding his alt mode, I love the alt mode. I, I think it looks really cool. It, it, it seems to be an incredibly real-world accurate um, A-10 Warthogger. You know, not 100% not accurate, but pretty darn close and I do enjoy it uh, about the biggest thing that I can complain about there just the color discrepancies between the the reds of the painted die cast and the reds of the molded plastic so that causes a little bit of a discrepancy and uh, takes away from the looks a little bit there but overall it looks great um, I think in the alt mode he could have used just a touch more paint here and there uh, my biggest point there would be on the gun in the front under the nose cone it would have been nice to have a gunmetal gray something like what we see here uh, just to set that off but overall done really well I love both modes I'm going to give him a 9 out of 10. Uh, moving on to the articulation uh, overall articulation is good uh, you know he's limited in his head as far as looking up down and side to side uh, and you've got to be careful he's got tricky splits you have to move those hip, hip skirts around uh, but other than that, I think he does a pretty good job, and he's stable enough. You can get him in a lot of modes. Would have liked to have had a little bit more ankle tilt out of the guy, uh, but what you have is pretty darn good. Uh, I do appreciate the fact that they have an ab crunch. That's always welcome to see in figures. So I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10 for articulation. I really think the thing that's dragging him down is just that limited head movement. Uh, I really, really would like for him to have been able to look up a little bit more. Moving on to the accessories, uh, this is his weakest point as far as I'm concerned. They're nice, but but they're light. As far as a figure at this price point with uh, that masterpiece scale, you get his weapon, you get his mask, um, you, you get some mounts for a 
uh, a flight stand. If you own it, that's great. If you don't own it, they do you no good. Uh, but the mask is cool. I do like that. And the, the gun is fine. But what else are you going to say? It has blast effect compatibility. Cool. I don't think that was by design. But I'm going to give them a 7 out of 10 for the accessories. Definitely the weakest point of the figure as far as I'm concerned. Uh, overall quality is the next thing that we're going to talk about. And he's pretty good. Uh, you know, about the biggest thing that I could say was the the knees and the ankles are a little bit looser than I would have liked. Everything else, I mean, he's got such tight tolerances, which is part of the reason that transformation is such a pain in the butt to get him into his bot mode. Uh, he's got tight tolerances. He holds poses well. Uh, no issues with paint. No issues with... Uh, any molded components or die cast components, all that works good. Just some slightly loose joints in those knees and ankles. So I'm going to give him a 9 out of 10 for overall quality. So that brings us to our last bullet, which is overall value. Hey, he's a masterpiece scaled figure from Fans Toys. What are you going to expect? Um, I picked this figure up. This was a pre-order from TFSource.com, and I paid $130 US for this figure. Eh... You know, I always want my figures to be less expensive, but man, I think the value's here for this guy. He is just a lot of fun. I think I can live with that price point for what you get for him. Uh, so I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10. So that brings us to our grand total out of a possible 50 points. The FT-54 Award Hog gets 41 out of 50, which puts him at 82%. Uh, I am absolutely going to recommend this figure. If you like fans toys, if you like the G1 figures, if you like Power Glide, this is this is a figure you're going to want. He's just a lot of fun. Just be careful with that transformation into the alt mode. It's just a pain in the butt to get everything lined up, but once you get used to it, it's not that bad. Um, trust me, it goes a lot better than what I showed on camera, so I appreciate the patience uh, in my transformation that I did on camera here. Uh, you know, sometimes it works out well, and then you turn the camera on, and then it's pain. So either way, with that, that's going to wrap it up. I hope you guys got some good information. I hope you got some entertainment out of this. Uh, if you haven't already done so, be sure to hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe. Leave a comment if you feel like it. I am going to make a concerted effort here to respond to comments uh, sooner rather than later. And one last favor to ask, if you know of anyone that would enjoy our channel, that would enjoy that what we do here, please share this video, share the channel with them, spread the good word. It's really cool to see the channel grow and to be able, able to engage with everybody. So with that, that's going to wrap it up. My dog uh, flapped her ears in approval once again. Thank you. <laughs> that's going to wrap it up. So until we see you guys in the next review, take care.